Chapter Seven of the Hoosier Schoolmaster by Edward Eggleston. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bridget Gage. Chapter Seven, ominous remarks of Mister Jones. The schoolmaster's mind was like ancient Ghoul, divided into three parts. With one part he mechanically performed his school duties. With another he asked himself, "What shall I do about the robbery?" And with the third he debated about Bud and Hannah. For Bud was not present, and it was clear that he was angry, and there was a storm brewing. In fact, it seemed to Ralph that there was a storm brewing all round the sky. For Pete Jones was evidently angry at the thought of having been watched, and it was fair to suppose that Dr. Small was not in any better humor than usual. And so, between Bud's jealousy and revenge, and the suspicion and resentment of the men engaged in the robbery at the Dutchman's, as the only German in the whole region was called, Ralph's excited nerves had cause for tremor. At one moment he would resolve to have Hannah at all costs. In the next his conscience would question the rightfulness of the conclusion. Then he would make up his mind to tell all he knew about the robbery. But if he told his suspicions about Small, nobody would believe him. And if he told about Pete Jones, he really could tell only enough to bring vengeance upon himself. And how could he explain his own walk through the pasture and down the road? What business had he being out of bed at two o'clock in the morning? The circumstantial evidence was quite as strong against him as against the man on the horse with the white left forefoot and the white nose. Suspicion might fasten on himself, and then what would be the effect of his prospects, on the people at Lewisburg, on Hannah? It is astonishing how much instruction and comfort there is in a bulldog. This slender schoolmaster, who had been all his life repressing the animal and developing the finer nature, now found a need of just what the bulldog had. And so, with the thought of how his friend the dog would fight in a desperate strait, he determined to take hold of his difficulties as Bull took hold of the raccoon. Moral questions he postponed for careful decision. But for the present he set his teeth together in a desperate bulldog fashion, and he set his feet down slowly, positively, bulldoggedly. After a wretched supper at Pete Jones's, he found himself at the spelling school, which, owing to the absence of Hannah and the excitement about the burglary, was a dull affair. Half the evening was spent in talking in little knots. Pete Jones had taken the afflicted Dutchman under his own particular supervision. "'I s'pose,' said Pete, "'that them air fellers what robbed your house must a come down from Jenkins Run.' They're the blamedest set up there I ever see. Yes, said Schroeder. But how did Yinkins Vellers know? Did I sell tea metter to de Squire, hey? How did Yinkins know anything bout the Squire's bayin' me dree hundred in tea hard cash, hey? Some scoundrels down in these ere parts is a layin' in with Jenkins Run. I'll bet a hoss, said Pete. Ralph wondered whether he'd bet the one with the white left forefoot and the white nose. Now, said Pete, if I could find the feller that's a-helpin' them scoundrels rob us folks, I'd help stretch him to the nearest tree. So vood I, said Schroeder. I'd stretch him till he bade me my dree hundred dollars pack, so I vood. And Betsy Short, who had found the whole affair very funny, was transported with a fit of tittering at poor Schroeder's English. Ralph, fearing that his silence would excite suspicion, tried to talk. But he could not tell what he knew, and all that he said sounded so hollow and hypocritical that it made him feel guilty. And so he shut his mouth, and meditated profitably on the subject of bulldogs. And when later he overheard the garrulous Jones declare that he'd bet a hoss, he could pine out somebody as no to blame sight more'n they cared to tell. He made up his mind that if it came to pintin' out, he should try to be even with Jones. End of chapter 7